Hello! How's everyone doing? Welcome to another live stream by myself. Um, Rico's away. It's not our Friday, so Friday is usually when we do um, a joint co-hosting of our weekly weekly update. Today I'm um, just me by myself. Uh, we're at home. We're under lockdown in 24 hours, uh, 48 hours. Uh, New Zealand will be under lockdown. Which is a concern, but please, please don't panic. I know a lot of people are just stressing out. I know I just, um, when I heard that, I just went up and grabbed some potatoes, some um, extra ciggies, because uh, I'm stressing out as well as you do. But hey, use whatever it does to calm you down. And for me, it's just having a bit of smoke on the old balcony. Now, I want to talk about creative people right off the bat. Um, the reason I want to do this straight away about the creative people is because as a creative person myself, we can feel overwhelmed. The worst time to be feeling overwhelmed is when we get uh, in a stressful situation like we're having right now. Where as a creative person, and I mean creative, I mean someone who does like painting, someone who draws manga, who does cartoons, comic books, who does paint, you know, um, clay stuff, cosplay uh, models, painting models, 40k, all that stuff, everything, digital, uh, traditional, uh, what have you, adult stuff, uh, children's stuff, in-between stuff, everybody's stuff, right? Now, when you're a creative person, you have to get into a nice space in your brain, in your mind, and a nice calm environment to feel like you're in the right place to put out good work. Because you don't want to be putting out work that you're going to later on go, man, that, 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 I, um, I wasn't in the right place when I did that, and now look at that, now I've got to redo that. So when you're stressing out, I know everybody's stressing out. And, uh, but hey, we're, we're a big family in New Zealand. We, even though we're so diverse, we're so, so many different people, we're still Kiwis, right? That's one thing that really, really defines who we are. We're Kiwis. And uh, and we're big fairy animals, really. Well, small little fairy animals, right? Uh, now, like Kiwis, we can go into our own little, little cave and we can hide away from everybody. But this is not the time to hide away from it, people. This is the time to get on social media and chat to friends and family. Chat to people, make sure they're okay. Elderly people, say hello to them, make sure they're alright if you're neighbours. You know, if you've got family in your home that are elderly, hey, look after them, take care of them. And back to the creative thing. So when you're a creative person, you kind of like think, well, I have to be in the right mind right now. I find, I'm, personally, I am, the reason I'm bringing this topic up is because I'm personally finding it difficult to finish one page, right? I'm thinking of all the guys that have to do a page daily for their manga, for their web, web comments that they make income from, like Patreon, stuff like that, like DeviantArt. So when you're when you have to do everything every day to earn an income of um, crowdfunding type sites or self-funded type sites where you produce work and then people pay you right there and then on a monthly basis or per item you can feel a bit overwhelmed and people will be going where where's my stuff where's my stuff and you go look dude i'm an artist i don't want to give you crap because you're going to be praying, paying for stuff so i don't you know and your your patron of mine, I've mentioned the patron in the last couple of weeks. That sorry, um, keep I gotta get a better stand for that. That um for the tribal data on it. So um you know everybody if you're if you're a patron of people, please be aware that as a patron of um you know of people on like you know in the crowdfunding stuff. So, hey hey mains, how's it going bro? Cheers, Alex. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the deal is that when you're in that situation and you've got people on your back going, hey, I want art, I need art, you just got to say, listen, put a post out saying, if, if you're feeling that way, put a post out saying, hey, I feel a bit overwhelmed right now. I'm stressing about my family. I can't get you that commission I, I've got ready for you, that I'm supposed to get ready for you, that you already paid for or that you're going to pay for me. But hey, we're going to get through this and we're going to keep creating art. Now, for that, it's like I was saying, you can go into a deep depression at times like this as well. 
right? It's like being at Christmas, like um, I mentioned on my personal thing. It's like at Christmas, everybody's crowding in on you and you need to find your safe space. And as a creative person, you have to find your safe space. And your safe space could be out on the balcony, in the kitchen, wherever, in your room, in the bathroom, singing and while you're having a shower, coming up with ideas. Wherever it is, find that special place for you in this time to just chill out, listen to some music, get your headset on. Wait. Are you guys listening? Give me a wave if you guys actually hearing me. I'm, I had my headphone head off. So, um, sorry guys. Um, let me put... <laughs> I came in from outside, I turned my headphones off and um, I forgot to put the good mic on. Let me just put that. Sorry guys. Uh, excuse me for that. I apologize immensely. Uh, let me see. All right. Let's get that on there. Sorry. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm talking about apologies, yeah? Um, right. How's that? Hopefully that's better. Okay, so, yeah. Everybody's going through the same situation. Nobody is out of the boat. And uh, some people are maybe faring better. Uh, maybe they live alone. But that's kind of like, the kind of just as bad if you've got a whole lot of family together because then you're by yourself and you're in your head. Right, and you're thinking about oh, oh, you know, my family, my family. Uh, one of our uh, one of our artists was saying, I'm not able to see my friends, uh, my my children this week. You know, next four weeks. And I said, Internet. You know, you got your internet? Yeah, yeah. Are you making nice uh, mains? Excuse me. Hmm. So she was, she's an, you know, she's an artist and she was saying, you know, just had, said, had to say hi to um, family and said, but I won't be able to see them for four weeks. I said, internet, and this is the best thing about our time right now where we can, and it's, and it's, and I'm glad what we have right now. And I, and I stressed this to um, some prefects and high school students two years ago, um, almost two years ago, you know, at, um, at the youth space in Whangarei, you know, they were getting together and um, talking about scholarships and I had a chance to talk to them. I said, way back in the 80s when I was their age, um, 16, 17, 15, 14, we didn't have this access to everybody in the world. And I can get on Skype and find out, oh, okay, I can get, um, yeah, I see what you mean. Took a while, took a while, click there when you said no. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, so it's what we have now is such immensely, immensely powerful and amazing as a generation. And I said to them, look, when we were their age, everybody basically, and I, and I hold on to this because I was a youth worker 20 years ago, right? Almost 20 years ago, I was a youth worker. And I remember helping youth, 13 and up, um, dealing with issues, uh, Showing them how to um, think about stories, how to how to apply themselves into drama, into act, you know, acting, writing, and thinking about other things apart from what's going on in their lives. And so, I was talking to these prefects uh, at um, at the amazing job that they're doing at Youth Space. That um, you know, I was the last person. There's about 20, 25 people in the room, and I was like, since I'm the oldest, let me. I'll take the longest to talk because you guys, you know, you talk two, three, four, five minutes. I'm old. I got a bit more thing to say. And this is a good thing. As an older person, you you get to understand a lot of more things around you, and you learn about the old, uh, past generation, and you think about the future generation. Not yet, bro. And um, and so so basically, you know, you 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 um you you learn to appreciate. I'm in the middle in my family. I'm kind of like, kind of sort of in the middle because I'm 46. I feel like a 27 year old in my head and I always will, I think. I think that's the weird thing that people don't understand about old people. That their best times in their lives is what they live. Oh, it's Suicide Squad. John? Oh, it's just a suicide, hashtag suicide, sorry. Yeah, it's a, let me just get it up. There you go. And, uh, yeah, I know some people don't like the movie, but I like the movie. I think it was just fun. And um, sometimes it was just fun. Um, so, yeah, so when you, um, 
you know, when you're in the middle, you know, I've got I've got nephews and nieces that are younger than you know, um, the Generation Z. Uh, uh, I've got gener Generation Y family members, and there's me, Generation uh, X, and there's my parents who are boomers, right? Um, and I think we don't appreciate the older generation much, as much as we should. I think we we uh, we sort of think that they, oh they don't know much they're old they don't know what they're going on about they just you know this and that and they talk about stuff about the past and that's not you know they don't even know how to use a computer problem is that's a negative way to look at the older generation because the older generation have so much to offer they have been through so many things least of them wars i mean i know my dad my dad uh was in the blitz seven years old i think it was 12 seven years old him and his sister, right, had to go through people bombing the cities in London, right, dropping bombs on them, hiding underground in the basements, wondering why the building's shaking as kids. And so we sort of think, oh, yeah, it's so far away. Why should we worry about them? But remember how they had to deal with all this, the trauma of that, the PTSD, the emotional loss of, uh, of family members, of mums and dads, of uncles and aunts, grandparents. And so when we when we just push them aside and we go, well, they don't know much, well, it's kind of an, it's kind of taking away all the wisdom they could pass on. If if and I learned this hard way 20 years ago, and um, and I realized because while, while I was teaching youth, I was thinking, wait, my, I don't even have a good relationship with my, with my own parents. How the hell am I trying to talk about these guys having a good relationship with their parents? And so, in the middle of like, after five years of doing all this stuff, the sixth year, when I was working with the Sally Army, I realized, dude, I need to sort out my own situation with the parents and figure out, hey, where dad's at, where mom's at, and just, you know, appreciate a bit more. And the last couple of years, I've been really questioning my dad about things, about the past, about you know, what it was like when he was growing up in the 60s and the 70s. He's got some great stories. And I think that's the thing about about older generation that have amazing stories. And I think if we if we just give some time to in ourselves and think, get in our heads and say, look, I know they're like this, they're like that. And just try to get inside with something that they like. Like they might have a hobby. And you go, well, tell me about your hobby then. Next thing you know, uh, yeah, you're right, man. You're right, John. Um, John says, I actually don't know how that older generation lived. They were really young when they started families at 17 or 18. That's true, right? And not only that, they had no parents to show them how to do it. Some of them had, you know, and some of them had to be brought up by their grandparents because their parents were over in freaking war. Um, mum, mum was um, helping out with the war preparations. Dad was over. Dad and uncles were over there fighting, you know, and and some of them had just, you know, some of the governments were conscientious uh, objectors, right? I learned about that uh, about a year and so ago with um with the RS um, RSA gentleman there. I think it was John or Chris the president there, you know, he told me about conscientious objectors, those guys who said, look, I have a big family. They need me to look after the farms, you know, uh, they need me to feed them. So I'm not going to go. And some of them were like poo-pooed. They were really mistreated. And years later, they were like appreciated for that. Because they were there with their kids. They're seven, eight kids. Like, they, I know families, like, I think there's about seven, um, I've, I think I've got four uncles and three aunts in their 50s and 60s. So, you know, that's like 1940 years, 50 ish, I guess. Matt says I'm good, good my, my thing. So, so you know, you sort of think, like, you're right. My, my grandmother, right, my grandmother married my granddad at 13 years old, right? I don't, I object to that right now, for the situation now. But back then, families had big families and they couldn't afford to feed their families so they would marry their children off younger. Now, that is atrocious to think about. And, you know, that's a horrible thing to think about, a 30-year-old girl getting married off. But 
my grandmother loved my granddad to the day she died, right? And so, you know, she just totally just couldn't live without him because he died early, uh, around about, I think, 55, 60, because he got hit in the chest from a bull. Yeah, bro. Yeah, 13. Remember we were talking about, um, not Anna, was it Anna Paquin or when we were at film school, we were talking about um, Whale Rider. We we're talking about Whale Rider being, you know, having a baby so young. You know, babies having baby was what you said to me at that time when we were at film school. And I was like, yeah, bro. You know, but yeah, 13 years old, seven kids over that, um, that time period. Um, and it's a wonder they were able to get through that. You know, no cesarean section, guys. Right? No, no modern med med medicine, but they were able to get through that. And um, let me just get this comment. Just, okay, so, whoops. Ah, I want to do that. Eh? All right. So, I'm going to go up and down here. Sorry, guys. So, uh, Jermaine says, well, I felt like we used to, un we said we don't understand, uh, we said they don't understand us. Now, my kids think that about me. Wisdom is across uh, generation, is, wisdom is cross-generational, but youth is wasted on the youth. I don't want to be told. Now, the, now they still want to be told once we cross that magic 30 or 40 year old and it changes and now I can't, can't get enough of my parents and my grandparents' lives. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, and at 13, yeah, she was, you know. And my parents and my grandparents were, went through a very difficult time and um, with their own family and it, because my granddad uh, I think married someone they didn't want him to marry. And yeah, so, you know, people think about those things now, right? You know, you know, mixed race families or something like that. But my, both my grandparents are Indian. But we think about that sort of thing. Oh, parents, I want you to marry that. And this is 60, 80 years ago, you know? And so it's... It, it, you're right, you know, uh, I I think the same thing. And when I was a kid, I was like, I don't want to be told what to do. I ran, you know, I basically moved away from home because I couldn't handle it. Uh, because I thought, you know, because of things that went in my head, in my life, I was like, I just can't handle my dad telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah. My kids are 13 and, and can barely manage to do a TikTok. Married. Yeah. Exactly. You know, Mary at 13, but kids can't handle TikTok. And this is the thing about the other thing about social media is that we, we put our heads down too much. And I'm, and I'm the same, but I always kind of break away. I, my time on social media is when I'm actually stop working and then go to social media, have a look for a couple, 20 minutes, have my break and then go back and do some work. And that's the sort of the thing you've got to actually instill in kids now. And so, and that's not my thing, right? That's not my thing. That's um, Natalie Gross from... Um, Uh, glow in the dark golfing. Oh, I can't remember the name. Somebody will remember that. Yeah, so she, I had her on the radio two years ago, and she was ta um, talking about um, you know when we were coming up to um, the EV Games uh, Edgy Trigger Finger, right? She was talking about I had her on, and she was talking about how like stop when the, when the kids are on the on the computer games, you know, or watching YouTube. Don't go and yell at them if you want them to go and eat food. Go and give them some food and get hey go have a break, right? You know, have some sandwiches, have some chips, here's a drink, go outside, have a break for a little while, and then come back in. So, the older generation do, you know, we don't realize until we get in our 30s and 40s. You're right, because I'm, I'm the, you know, that's what took me to realize that I kind of need to listen to my parents a bit more. I need to listen to their stories. Tell me what's going on. What did you experience? So I can then pass on to my niece and nephews, and then they can pass on to their children because those stories that our children um, that they experience can help us with the teach and also teach the future generation on how to handle things one of the things i think we need to uh, i think for me one thing that i just found important for me was i never learned about the importance of budgeting and money at a very young age i started working when i was about six, seventeen, and you know, I was hard at working until, um, you know, I, I worked till about 92. Then I took about three years off to study. Then I went back to study. 
uh, sorry, when I went back to working for about another four years, uh, and I think it might be about five years, and then I went away to study again for film, and then I went back to working again, all right? So one thing that I, I wish I'd learned, and I think that's most important if you're, if you're a dad or mom, if you, especially when you're a young mom and dad, is to sit down with the kids and teach them about budgeting. I think budgeting is very important because then if you can teach the importance of the value of money for every single dollar you as a parent earn, you can then show them to appreciate how hard you work. That every hour you spend, this is what it equates to, $18, $20, $30, whatever it is, divide it and say, this is how much my, my time per minute is worth at work. And then you're going to come and ask me for, hey, can you buy me this $100 thing? Or buy me this $50, $150 game? Or $60? Or monthly this or that? And, and I'm saying, I'm just as bad. That's what I'm trying to say here. That when I was a kid, uh, that I... Um, I basically and just basically went into town every Thursday or Friday when I got paid. Clockwork. I'll get on the. And I used to live in Auckland. I used to get on the bus from Mount Wellington. You know, basically get my wage, get on the bus, cash out because we get packets of cash. All right, it wasn't going to the bank account. We get a uh, envelope with a little uh, pay slip in it saying this is what you earned. It was one hundred sixty-seven dollars a week. For 40 hours a week, right? $167 a week, and that was a lucky time. I think I earned less than that. And then my pay, uh, wage was raised up to from $5.95 to $6.50. And I was working, and I worked there for about four, three years. And that was, that was it. And my comics cost me about $6 per comic. And, and it's about $10 per uh, cassette. Music cassette. So what I would do, I'd take my hundred sixty dollars into town. This is what I wasn't going to talk about this, but think, um, yeah, we, we're here. Oh, while I'm talking about that, I got given this last. Um, I think it was last year, the anniversary uh, of um, which is coming up, guys. Shout out to my friends at uh, uh, Northern um, Northern Art Center. Jason and uh, Julia. This is their second year, and it's a and they're about like next month, I think it is. They're about to celebrate their two years, and I got this. Yeah, and that. Yeah, every small business out there. Excuse me, I'll turn the light on. It's getting a bit dark in here. I think I should always keep the light on because it goes from like light, light to dark really fast. Um, even though I've got light from the front and light from the back. Um, yeah, so every small business right now is hurting, really, really hurting. So if you if you got spare cash and um, and you were putting off buying something later on, like months on, and, I'm, and I know we're talking about spending money and stuff, but small businesses are hurting right now. So if you, if you have money that you were going to spend later on, and I know everybody needs money right now because hopefully what the government is doing and i'm fully behind what they're doing hopefully the business people and wage earners because i know people work from hand to mouth i've done that for years and years and years so i understand that um so uh, so hopefully the relief comes really fast from the government for the small business owners for the workers from hand to mouth and i've talking to some of my mates on facebook and they're feeling it now already because if you if you spent last week's grocery money money is gone and this week you're supposed to work for that next week's grocery money, if it's not coming, it's a difficult time for you. So I understand it fully. So, but the other side of this, is that, uh, we're going to get through it, all right? We're going to get through it, and and, um, and I think if we stick together and we stay calm, we're going to get through it. All right. So back to. Um, um, North and Satsund. So this they started two years ago. Uh, last year was the anniversary, and as you remember, we did a live stream um, at the end of the night. And you know, I got to get painted as my one of my favorite characters. Um, let me pull it up. I should. I didn't. I wasn't thinking about talking about this. So.
uh, one of my favorite characters, uh, Spider Jerusalem. And you, if you saw, they really, really did a, uh, Linda and Julia did a really good job. They, uh, they basically, you know, painted my whole upper torso in, a, in my, in the same color all over with the skin. And she was telling me the name of it and, uh, and, um, of the paint. And she said, this is the skin color that you have, Aru. And this is what, if you, whenever you get, um, you go to get spray, uh, airbrushed or anything, this is what you use. So anyway, so this is Spider Jerusalem. He's from, he, he's a journalist. And I think this is the guy that um, really, um, I think, really made me think about politics. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one, this one I bought after I left, um, when I was, when I left, uh, when, when we finished uh, film school and I went into working in Auckland and I, I, it was my birthday present for 2007. I'm oh, sorry, my Christmas present for 2007. I paid $250. That was like my bonus. Like, so I would basically earn about $750 a week. I would put $500 straight into our joint account. And everything else would go into, you know, that would go into my own personal exp uh, expenses, pocket money, and I'd go down and put money on it. Uh, over several weeks, I'd just go and go, here's some money, here's some money, here's some money. And that was King of Cards back in the day. I think they're still called King of Cards, but they're more about gaming, uh, tabletop and stuff like that. And they do, uh, they do a really good job there. Uh, so yeah, that would be feeling it as well. Uh, I know with Wizard and stuff, uh, people who do... Um, the Wizard of the Coast, Magic, and stuff like that. You know, you guys who do tabletop games every week, you guys create an amazing, healthy environment for pop, um, you know, pop culture through the enthusiasts. You guys really create a social environment for people to come and enjoy themselves and make friendships. And some of them, lifelong friendships. And that's the thing about comic books and pop culture. I mean, I know... I know um, James from way back, uh, sorry, um, Maine's from film school back in 2004, right? And we're still friends, right? That's like, what, 16 odd years ago? Yeah, right? Um, and I've got another friend, who, um, Xavier, who's down in New Plymouth. And I went back and lived with them after about five years. <laughs> and, and while I was studying to finish all my film school degree, you know, and I um I went back to, and stayed with them for about eight months. And okay, so now I've forgotten. Oh yeah, while I'm doing that, I'll just hold this up. So I've forgotten. Um, that's it. There we go. Transmetropolitan. All right, I'll get back to the money thing in a minute. But while I got him, Transmetropolitan is an amazing vertigo. And we, I've been talking about Vertigo so much because Vertigo, the old Vertigo, like before they ruined it in 2014 or something, the old Vertigo was the classic of the best of the best of the best of the best creators and writers in comic books. Uh, uh, you know, in America I'm talking about. Not the rest of the world, but in America. And Transmetropolitan was about 75 issues. I've got um, graphic novels and I've got a couple of issues there. I think I've got the first three issues and a couple of others and uh, Derek Robertson who's tie into the boys Derek Robertson is a comic book artist who did all the most of the like most of the artwork on the boys comic books so those characters you see as you're watching the first season and whatever whenever second season comes out of the boys remember the guy who came up with this designed all this for trans Transmetropolitan did the boys and I've met him. That's why I got the signature and stuff. And I took a pile of books a couple of years. I think it might have been 2008 or 2000. I think it was 2014. And I said, sign. And the reason I say that is because way back in 2007, I met him on on on, um, on DeviantArt when I first joined. I realized I'm 12 years on DeviantArt now. So, and I'm a core member there. So, hey, if you want to support what we're doing, just while I'm talking, and if you're on DeviantArt, check out my donate thing. And that donate's going towards actually producing comics, right? Telling good stories. Well, hopefully I'm a good writer by now. 20, 20 odd years of writing. Hopefully I've got it down pegged now. Um, so, 
yeah, so I met him. Okay, so get, getting rid of parents. So, um, Mains was saying how he's a, he's a Nazi <laughs> to his, with kids with the PlayStation and stuff. And, um, yeah, bro, it was that long ago. And now you got kids, right? Um, yeah, so, I don't want to hurt this thing. This, this is one of my precious. Uh, let me find another little display unit you know, to hide it away yeah, so it doesn't get hurt. Yeah, so, okay, back. <laughs> yeah, so, like I said, it's, it costs a bit. It's fine, and it, it's one of my preciouses. Um, and like you guys will have your preciouses as well, right? So, yeah, so getting back to the, to the older generation, you know, we, we kind of, we kind of like write them off because they're gray haired and stuff. They don't know what they're talking about. They live their lives. Why don't they let us carry on with our lives? Stop bothering us. But they're sitting there going, I've got so much to tell you guys so that your life isn't messed up like ours was you know we've we great power as they call them in new zealand we have so much to impart and i'm so glad my i have my dad um that i can sit down with my dad and i can listen to his story hear his experiences and appreciate him more and i talk about that in the um i think a little bits and pieces i put in the into the the circle comic book that we that i've written uh, I think I'm about to put six, issue six out to get sorted um, for printing and stuff. But that will be for a while now, you know, with the situation we've got. Um, and um, they have so much. And I think we, our, we disregard them to our own um, negligence. That we disregard the, um, our gray hairs, you know, our comatuas, our elderly to our own detriment. Um, that was the word I was looking for. Um, you know, to our detriment because we we think that they they don't know nothing. Their minds are going, and hey, maybe their minds are going, but they remember so much about the experiences they've had. And I think for us to just push them aside is what's going to happen to us as we get older and more gray hair. I notice that I have a patch of gray hair now. I've been waiting for my gray hairs for a couple of years now, for at least two years, and I finally got a patch. I keep getting streaks, but now I've got a patch. And I, and I think if we start really in this moment, because it's really taught us a lot, that we're going to lose, hopefully not, hopefully not, you know, our elderly, um, are many of them, hopefully not is what I mean, not many, all of them, I mean many of them, through the situation. Because we... We will lose so much wisdom and so much experiences because if we do that, if this happens. Um, and, and while I'm on that, let me just talk about um, going back to pop culture again. Uh, Evangel Evangeline Lo uh, Lily was from uh, Ant-Man. I've got a poster up there. So I'm looking at trying to make sure I remember. Uh, and Vanessa Hudgens were online this week. And laughing off and not worrying about people and they're like we're just gonna carry on doing our own thing we're gonna like you know we're just not bothered I'm just dropping off my kids gonna to gym class and I'm gonna carry on with my life not worry and Sophie Turner good old Sophie Turner from Games of Thrones sorry can't remember her name because I, I totally ignored the last season of, uh, of um of um Game of Thrones, just just didn't even bother, and then I, I'm like I wasn't gonna watch it anyway, and then suddenly like everybody says it's the best worst thing ever, and so I didn't bother anyway because I'd read the books, um, the last last uh, book I'm just totally I was like yeah this is cool I'll just stick with this until the new book comes out. And I'm supposed to read the new um, there's one I haven't read that he's written um, as part of that. Anyway, so she basically got online and she just ripped onto them. Right, just called them, called those two out, and said, "Listen, I'm living." I think she was saying, talking about how she's living with an elderly father, and you guys are talking about you don't care about the older people. You don't, you know, you don't worry. You know, you're not concerned about, you know, maybe being a carrier and passing it on from 
onwards because it's not going to affect you, but it will affect them. All right. It's kind of a generation jumpy thing. So you could have it. It wouldn't bother you as, an, you know, as a younger person, but you could pass it on to an older person. And they didn't, you know, Evangeline Lilly and Vanessa Hudgens just didn't care. And it's just kind of sad to see that. You know, you've got a Gen X and you've got Gen Z, kind of a Gen Y, basically talking like that. And it makes people write us off more, you know, our generations off more because they go, oh, look at them. And the same thing was with Spring Break. If you saw the videos about Spring Break, all those guys partying it up, right? Partying it. We've been planning this for months. You know, we're not going to be bothered. We're just going to party up, sex it up, do all our things. Just party, party, party and drinking. Hey. You know, cool. But guess what? If you come in with a cult, you know, if you become a carrier, then you pass an older generation, older person when you go shopping for your booze or you contact, you know, you're talking and get passed on, you know, there's someone who could lose a life. And I think that's the seriousness of it that we're not taking seriously. And I think be prepared. Don't freak out. As I said at the start, don't freak out. And I've been saying for weeks, don't freak out. Just plan ahead. I did. And I just went down today and got some more. The other thing is that um, I think uh, the other thing that was crazy this week was bless her heart. And she's amazing as a Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot, right? Gabo, Gabo. Can't pronounce her name. I don't know how it's pronounced. I can never remember it. Wonder Woman. Did the Imagine thing on Instagram. <laughs> she got her friends together and said, Imagine if you didn't have this. They got ripped to shreds because, hey, they're living in their multi million dollar homes. I'll get, I'll get back to you, Jericho. Um, so they're living in their million dollar homes, pantries and freezers full of food. Those who, you know, those, some of them have. They've shown, they've shown videos of, um, like, posters of dope, you know, shape, safes full of dope. So they're all cool. they got all their medicine all prepared. They're not worried about anybody, but they want us to imagine what it's like for them. So people have been ripping into them saying, I can't afford food this week. And, you want, and you're telling me the multimillionaire actor, actresses out there, you cringy people. That you're like us, that we should, that you're imagining that you're like us. How about why don't you just go well, go hand out some money to some poor people on the streets? And this is what reminds me of is uh, the Larry the Cable Guy called them out on this. He basically said, 200, two hundred, two 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 k's down the road from you are people on the street homeless. And here you are doing this silly shit, excuse my language, and pretending to be holier than thou and saying that you're just like us, yet there's people 200 meters, this is California they're living in, right? LA, that they're living it, and they are, they're just like everybody else. Hey, hey. And this is why Ricky Jabez called them out, you remember, at the Globes. He said, just say thank you, get your trophies, Say thank you, thank your Lord, Savior, whatever, thank your family, thank your producers, and just walk off. Don't, pro, you know, pontificate. Don't preach to people because they don't want to listen to you. And I, and I mentioned this when, when that happened, that we don't, we, everyday people struggle. And I, I have my own, you guys out there have your own. I don't understand your struggles. You don't know my struggles. And so, to have somebody overly rich go on about people and, you know, say, hey, you know, imagine, and it just didn't work. And they got ripped to shirts. Um, um, Jericho, okay, so my opinion on lockdown, it's good. I expected it earlier. I was hoping for it a week ago, to be honest. I really was. And... And I've been staying, saying it on my own personal page. Uh, and because it's my personal page, people who know me personally understand, you know, 
I mean, I can, and they can rip into me and they can tell me off. And, and they, some of them have. And that's okay because it's an opinion and everybody's got one, right? But my opinion is you ask, I expected a week ago, bro. I did because that would have stopped all those people coming through the, the planes, boats and stuff. As we saw in Northern, guy got off the boat, French person, not sure if it's a guy or girl, got off the boat, boom, hit it. So by the time he gets it, he's got it. And now, how many people did he meet before? And this is what's happening. People don't understand the community that we have in New Zealand. We're very communal. People around the world talk about how we walk everywhere. That we actually don't always drive everywhere. We, if we just walk down the street, right? And we walk a lot more. Whereas everybody, like say in New York and stuff, they'll get in a taxi just to walk a couple hundred meters, right? For us, as I've said, last couple of weeks, just don't panic, just prepare. Make sure for a month. I said it, it was for a month. Two weeks, you know, because I said, okay, be prepared for two weeks. And I said, hey, it might be longer, so prepare for a month. Uh, I just, talk about that, I've just put a, uh, hey, Kara, how's it going down there? You're from Dunedin, right? So I just put on, uh, like last week, I went and bought um, pork hock, right? Smoked pork hock, you know, um, um, sort of like they come in this um, sealed, um, heavy sealed plastic and they're smoked and it's yummy and you chop it up. And so I've just, just before I got on, I'll, and I'll, I'll put the post, uh, pictures up on Instagram because I took photos and just because I like to, sometimes when I do this sort of stuff, I put like, especially when I'm cooking, different things, I just, especially if I've used other people's um, uh, recipes and bits and pieces or if I've used ready-made meals and how to use it. Um, and because sometimes people think that if it's for chicken, I can't use it with pork, right? Or if it's for lamb, I can't use it with beef and vice versa. I always do it. And the reason I put that on, on uh, Instagram uh, with the photos is to say, try it, right? Right. So, yeah. So, I, so I've got, I'm, I basically prepared myself five, five days a meal by doing that. I went out and bought some, just before when I heard about the lockdown, I went, okay, what do I need? I need onions and some kumara. I have carrots. I went out and got some carrots last week. I got some pumpkin. Cool. So I can make another stew. Cheers, bro. Hey, let, um, let me know what Wellington's doing. What's up with that? Uh, so, um, yeah, so basically, and then I also, last week, I went and bought beans. Kidney beans, uh, I think white, um, black-eyed pea, uh, peas and stuff like that. And so, you know, and I've got soup mixes, canned goods, tomatoes, because one thing I learned with mum she always likes using tomato paste and stuff. So I always, I've always made sure that I've got tomato paste. And being from Fiji, I'm sure there's a can of uh, coconut milk in there, right? So that, and I went and bought extra bags of rice, got about four cages of rice, pasta, stuff like that. Because, because of what I was being told by my friends over in America, that, hey, this is what's happening. It catches fast. Please just be aware and be prepared. And not for two weeks, but for a month and so that was like that was on like Saturday he told me hey hey Ari month mate month it should be longer than two weeks uh, so yeah excuse me All right so the other things happening is a lot of shop comic shops are feeling the pinch in America and obviously around the world Italy would be feeling it hard uh, so comic shops basically saying we're in trouble and they've been in trouble for about 10 years and uh, because what happens with um, like the big uh, like with comics by the time they arrive in New Zealand or Australia outside of America you can't send it back once you bought it they're yours you cannot send it back you might be able to get this gun but you can't send it back so what's happened is in America all the, like, say, Image and some of the um, IDW have said, we will fully, fully refund all your unsold comics during this time. Because guess what? People can't go buy it. So because they can't go buy um, buy their comics, shops are feeling the pinch because they live day to day. Um, they look week, week to week. they got to pay to pay their um, workers week to week. A couple of them just said, hey, we're going to close for two weeks. And next thing they said, we're on lockdown. They said, we're going to close indefinitely. And the sad thing is that the biggest, two biggest companies 
in the world. Marvel, DC. That now we're not we're not doing returnables. We're not going to fully refund. Are we just going to give you discounts up to thirty percent? Yeah, no, uh, even though you guys are going to close, we're not worried about you. We don't. Yeah, because that was basically their thing. Like, oh, we're going to have great discounts. Talk to us one on one. It's like, does that mean because I'm a smaller shop, you're going to give me less discount? But if I'm a bigger shop, you're going to give me a bigger discount? Or does it determine on how many workers I have? Or does it determine how many family I have? How many children I have to feed? Or how many children my workers have to feed. Is that what it's determined? So people really ripped it into Marvel and DC. And this is basically going to hurt them hard. People have already said, you know what, we're going to support other smaller... I know I uh, from what Alterna's doing, Alterna was hard out going, guys, you two guys need to speak up and start, you know, to Marvel and DC, you guys need to speak up and start thinking. Because Alterna's like us, we're a smaller company like them. They're slightly bigger. Uh, it's Alterna Comics. And we've always, Risons and Comics have always, and I say we because I'm part of Risons and Comics, is that they're one of our publishers, and I'm, and I'm you know, I'm one of their um, division heads. I talked to Hawk, who's the CEO there yesterday on Facebook, uh, on Skype, and I said, what are we doing? What are What is our offer to stores that carry our books? He said, we have always had a right of return. With everybody that's in for, uh, invoiced with us, that have a carrier invoice with us, and he said, be clear, everybody that carries an invoice with us, we have a right of return, that we we will buy back whatever is isn't sold. And I said, cool, because that's what I think we should do. And so I posted uh, and said, yeah, this is what we're doing. You know, uh, Rides and Comics, and behalf of Rides and Comics, some comics is what we're doing. And and in a way, it sort of showed that the indie companies are more, because we know as independent companies that stores help us hard out with our print comics because when we print our comic it, it people subscribers get them but a lot of people a lot more people see them when it's in the store when it's sitting on the shelves when you walk past you go oh what's this huh okay go have a look at something oh maybe go try that out yeah and so on or tell their friends about it and that's a bigger, bigger market for us. And I hope that you guys will go to risingsandcomics.com and support us in this time. Because when you buy from us, hey, we're help, we're making. Uh, if you go to like, if you're buying from the stores that carry our stuff, you're helping them, but you're also helping us do some more as we get through this. It's going to hurt us in the short term. Hopefully, it won't hurt us in the long term. But by doing it, but hey, we want to be there with the comic stores. And as a comic former comic store owner. I know what it's like, right? So I've been saying, so I was on Twitter saying, "Hey, I understand what these guys are going through. I know how difficult it is to have piles and piles of comics that you can't get real, that you know that 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 trash comics that you that I as a comic store owner thought they look good, the covers look good, the story blog looks good, then they come in and it's like, Ugh, this isn't where they're supposed to go. So when they do that, you sort of get the idea that hey, look." They're not really supporting those small guys. They've been basically like, they want to go digital, digital, digital. They want to go to Walmart. They want to go to library. That's their cool thing. For that's a cool thing that they're always thinking about right now with DC and Marvel, library, and Walmart, because GameStop has stopped. Um, GameStop has stopped carrying comics in America, and GameStop looks like they're going to be closed. And they are and uh, talking about comic stores closing. Valiant Comics, the guys who just put out. Uh, in partnership, I think, with Paramount, Bloodspot, they are out of money, it seems, because they basically said, we're going to lock down for four months, uh, for a whole month. Everybody put your pen and paper down. we got no money to pay you guys. So, yeah, that's sad. That is sad. And this could be the, the death knoll, the tenure that's been coming, the, you know, the banging on the drums that, hey, 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 hey. You know, the cry wolf type thing, the, the sky's falling. This could be the sky that falls on the comic industry, mainstream comic industry. And ho and hopefully, not for us as independents, you know, as we're just beginning um, with Plunge. Also, uh, I think um, Rises and Comics has been around for 14 years. I think it's important right now that smaller the companies that supporting this supporting the stores are supported as well 
and um, I speak as a creator as well as an owner as well as a division head as well as part of another, of another company is that we want to last a, last a course right we want to be there for the end, end of the mile right we're going to be at the finishing line when we're through this the only way we're going to be there is if people support the stores and if they get online and support those buy from the stores online and say hey we'll pick it up when it's when this is over but we'll pay you now we'll keep our we'll keep our subs going you know but sadly dc and marvel don't care right these guys and these guys don't care so yeah the other thing why the comic stores are um, hurting and the comic industry is hurting is because you got people like Dan Slott and Gail Simone. I got attacked by Gail Simone online this week because I said, well, she's trying to play both fields. After 10 years of attacking people, now she's trying to say, call it truce. And it's like, okay, that's cool. But I think you should apologize for the 10 years of attacking customers, of attacking the comic book industry. Um, of, sorry, not industry. Of customers, of fans, of 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 um, of your patrons, people who just only bought Marvel comics or only bought DC comics, who didn't even care about all the smaller guys, but only like me, right? When I was in my in the nineties and uh, late eighties, when I was buying comics, all I was buying was two thousand eighty and Marvel comics. They didn't even care about Superman or anything to do with DC for about six whole years. That's all I spent all my money on. Thousand, tens of thousands of dollars of my income I spent on Marvel now I feel like I regret it because now for the last 10 years they've just been destroying the whole industry by people like Dan Slott and Gil Simone and anybody else they've, they've got in there they just don't really care about the stories they don't really care about how they treat people like Dan Slott basically said like he just went hard on politics last week he just said F you and I've mentioned this before. If you're if you voted for Trump, what has that got to do with co you as a comic book person, All right? For me, I don't like Trump, and I do, and I like Trump. Like I don't really understand. Uh, I don't like his Twitter thing, rants and stuff. But I listened to entire, entire. I like like yesterday. I spent an hour and a half listening to his thing. I was like, okay, okay, cool. I get where you're coming from. Cool. And so. I put that aside. I don't go, you know, even with Alan, just in that guy, I listen to you, cool, cool, cool. I just wish you had done it earlier, cool, cool, cool. Right. Uh, I voted for you last time. I'm not thinking about voting for you next time. Because I wanted you to build houses, you decide you wouldn't build houses. That sort of thing, right? Uh, and so, but I am not going to get out of there and say, if you voted for Jacinda, I'm not going to, you're a piece of such and such. That's a horrible way to be in. In customer service basically that's what we are as as artists and creators we're in customer service we are selling a product that we love and appreciate and we some of us have entire lives I mean I've spent since I was like seven loving comics by the time I could spend money on comics was around about 86 I always spent money on comics right so you you talking about 30 odd years of spending money on comics and then you have these guys tell you you're a piece of such and such or F you if you're such and such. And Gail Simone, basically, I, I put a post up, like I said, and it's gone. I, don't, I couldn't find it on my Twitter again. I think she deleted it. Weird. Anyway, she was talking about like how, um, you know, because she's been abusing everybody. And I mean by everybody, anybody who's a fan of comic books. Hey, Jace. Uh, oh, sorry, um, Cara, I forgot to read your tweet. I was, um, your comment. So Wellington, like everywhere, everywhere, everyone are being idiots, but getting ready to like, yeah. Sorry about not reading that, bro. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, you know, we're in customer service. We, 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 we spend months, or like me, I spent years, you know. Oh, well, over a decade working on Incredigirl. Because, I've, you know, for about almost like five, six years, I put it aside. I'm working on it. I mean, it took us now for almost five years to get to Red Dot. You know, um, some of the other comics are older. Some of the older stories I'm really putting out are older than that. Maybe about 15, 16 years. Some, the circle I wrote when I was at film school, I wrote it as a film first. 
a script for a film and then I turned it into a, movie, a, sh um, a feature film right and then then I went back and said oh, what am, I can't do anything I'm, I'm working too much I don't have time to make films so I decided to make a comic book and here we are now yeah so the idea is if you know um, when you're creating something it takes a lot of time and effort and you put a lot of energy in. the last thing you want to do is go and crap all over your all, all over the people that would want to buy it that are thinking about it that might tell their friends about buying that friend might want to buy it that might buy it they might tell somebody else about it it's it's a, it's a pyramid it's a downhill pyramid to a bigger 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 thing but you, if you spend years and years crapping on people online on Twitter and then say guess what I'm gonna call it truce bro you know what I'm just gonna call it hey hey so I, I said to her are you now playing both fields out of the blue she jumps on there and goes and so these are your leaders I'm like these are the people you listen to I'm like wait what it was a it was a question are you playing both fields it's a legitimate question, right? Are you now, after 10 years of hounding and abusing and calling people racist, calling them xenophobes, calling them Nazis, now you're going to be nice to them without even apologizing? You could have come online and said, hey, look, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I've hurt the industry. This is what they've done for 10 years. They've legitimately hurt the industry. And... Now you're going to play the field. That was my question. And then she basically, and I said, she, she thought I was comic skate. I'm like, dude, I'm in New Zealand. I've only just started doing this thing. How am I comic skate? I've listened to guys to comic skate and understand. I actually appreciate some of the things they're saying. I think they're pretty cool about some of the things they're saying. Some of the things, no, nah, I don't like groupthink. I really, really don't like groupthink. And I said, look, I don't appreciate the fact that you're thinking that I'm them. And you're trying to lump me as them, even though I'm not with them. And even though if I might agree with some of their points, I'm not into groupthink. So you should have read my bio, Miss Simone, before you started coming at me. And then she, I think she basically deleted the, the tweet when she realized she was wrong. She didn't apologize and say, hey, I was wrong. And this is a problem with when you, when you, you know, I've apolog I, I will always apologize unless I'm not. Unless it's an opinion that I stand by. And sometimes I will stand by my opinion hard. If I, And even if you say I'm wrong, I will appreciate your comment. Me if I'm wrong. But that's principles. If I say I don't like um, Miss Marvel, comment, uh, the movie, and I'll never watch it, you can't say, watch it, watch it, watch it. You, you're a horrible person for watching it. It's like, not watching it. I'm like, but I'm not telling you you're a horrible person for not watching it. And this is what they do. So they get on there and they go, you're a horrible person, you're this and this and you're this. All day long. She could have just said, hey, yeah, yeah, I, um, I apologize for the way I've been going on. You know, let's, you know, go, yeah, cool, that's cool. And leave it. Because so most of the times I make comments, I just don't even bother reading the replies because I think it's, not, it's just my opinion. And everybody has an opinion. And that's okay to have an opinion. Um, and the thing is, if you're putting it out there, stand by it. And I think, hey, Rico, Rico said that to me. Like, if you're going to put anything online, if you're going to swear online, if you're going to say things online, stand by it. If you're not willing to do it, then if you're not willing to stand by what you're saying, or if you regret it, apologize. If, you're, if you are not willing to stand by what you're saying, say it. And if you realize later on that it was a mistake, apologize. People appreciate apologies. And, you know, that's cool. And I think Gail just, you know, after 10 years of ruining her, her, uh, her customer base, people not, and people, there are people that won't buy her comic books. I like some of the work she's done. I have, I actually met her and I've had her sign my Birds of Prey number eight, where uh, Nightwing, um, is it Tim Drake? And uh, beds, beds, wing, um, beds of prey, um, Rico, uh, kisses Barbara Gordon, and he's and it's a great cover for that. She wrote, you know, she came up with the whole, the whole birds of prey thing way back in two thousands, 
early 2000. And I got it for 50 cents because nobody wanted it. And I got it for 50 cents. And I ended up seeing her in 2007. I got it signed and I was like, yay, you know, cool. And here we are, 13 years later after meeting her, she's like trying to attack me on Facebook for um, Twitter for like, asking a question. And without even checking who I was, and, you know, usually if somebody replies to me, I always go and check. And just to make sure where they're from, you know, because in my replies, I want to make sure that I'm replying specific to their country or to their fandom. Or, you know, if somebody's talking about Star Wars, I got to make sure I know what I'm talking about with Star Wars and such on. Because it was, who, wants to who wants to just complain on stuff they don't have anything to do with or not appreciative of it? Okay. Um... Let's see, where are we with the time here? One hour. Um, streaming. Right, so Onward got, uh, is, got chucked, is going to get chucked on streaming. Um, so if you have Disney+, Plus, you get to see that on there. Um, the issue right now with uh, a DC is, uh, is, has, has asked for a $60 billion bailout. That's huge. Because that means that they they don't have the audience or subscribers that they they said they were going to have for Disney Plus. So which which basically means all the work that all this this whole announcement about hey Disney Plus is going to be this yeah you know, we're going to take people from Netflix and bring it over to Disney Plus didn't work. The reason for that is, as I think I might have mentioned, is too much streaming sites. You, you know, there's too many. When you have too many things on the shelf, you just go with what you know. If you got Eater, all right, Kiwis, Eater, and probably over, US guys will know this as well. Around the world, you'll know Heinz, Awatis. Budget range, a uh, hundred different others, right? That I can, you know, you know what you'll buy, what you're always used to, what your mom and dad bought, right? What you know, they bought what is that you you grew up on the taste, you love the taste. That's what you get. That's what you'll buy automatically in your head. Like these were tasting nice. My mommy cooked them, so uh, or you know, or dad cooked them, so you know, or aunt, you know, grandma. So that's what I'm gonna buy. And or else, if you're on a budget, you just go, what's the cheapest, man? Kids aren't even going to know. I'll just put some flavor in. Which is what I used to do for myself. I'll just buy some budget ones and just put extra spice in it. it tastes the same, right? It's just beans. You just you just make the sauces, but buy nicer. And that's my, that's my chef training coming up. And work coming up. So you're not going to be going Hulu. You're not going to be going Netflix. As you know, you're gonna have, you've already had Netflix for a few years now. You're not going to go Disney Plus. You're not going to go uh, Prime. You you might go. Let's try it for a month, which everybody did with Disney, and they went. Mandalorian's over. Eh. Everything we've ever watched for the generation, like the last thirty years, is going to be on. We've already watched that we wanted to watch, and most of it's online. You know, some of the movies are online now with YouTube. Right, the older ones I'm talking about, right, and all the cartoons, you know, even you know Disney has their own, you know, channels where they do all this stuff. They've already got all this stuff on there. So, you know, you had Apple TV, uh, you know, Apple doing their own streaming site, and some weird name they had, some grape or something like that. You're not gonna suddenly have a hundred dollars a month to spend on all that different streaming sites you're just gonna go with what you know All right um, so I'm just gonna add that I'm gonna leave that I'm just gonna read Kara's um, comment here so I have found that 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 um, I found there are two types of comic people that the ones that understand people's differences of opinion and then there are the very arguments ones that argumentative ones that don't uh, care what your opinion is and will fight teeth and nail to get their opinion across and that's basically the new Marvel situation really uh, Like safe space talking about safe space the guy's gone into hiding Kibble Smith 
he's gone into own, his own personal safe space by the seams of it. He hasn't talked ever, ever since um, that video came out. And people just, 100, like the last count was, I think, was 118,000 had downvoted the video on, on YouTube. That's, that's like 118,000 customers that won't buy this book. There might be a few that will buy it, the first issue, just for a joke, to put away and say, you know, a few years ago, <laughs> I remember this, this came out, you know, or just buy it just because it's number one. I've done that often, just buy it, put it on sleeve, bag and board, bag and bone, as we call it, and put it away. A lot of them, have, you know, I've never opened. And a lot of them have grown up in price, grown up in uh, investment price, I guess. Um, and um, yeah, and that might be, you know, and those are the 18, there was 18,000 that actually liked it. So one person actually liked it. So those are the 18,000 that will buy it for that reason. Or they'll buy the, like you said, car tooth and nail to get their point across and will never back down. Um, personally, like this, talking about back down, I haven't liked Tom Keen's um, writing since 2018. Uh, the writer of Batman. He wrote it for about from 2007 or something like that, uh, 2017. So he wrote it since then, and and he's just finished. And people have hated his writing. I just couldn't stand it. I just I I just couldn't stand. I think I read it for about 12 issues, and I was like maybe but no 20 actually. I read 27 issues, so I guess about just over two years, and I went. This isn't, I'm not feeling this. This is the first time in all of this, reading comic, um, like, com um, Batman comics, and I've read hundreds of them, that I'm not, not really getting this. And then, so, and then I was, you know, I was talking to um, Rico, t messaging him in, uh, and um, on Messenger saying, you know, I just, you know, just not into really what's going out on uh, DC and Marvel, and he said, well, you should check out Batman. There's something good happening with Batman. I said, okay. So I picked it up. Uh, 80, are we at 886 or something like that? Or 986, something like that. Anyway, number 86 or whatever, number we're 100 we're up to. And I read it. And I thought it was cool. And you know, there was a lot of story to it. The artwork was amazing by one of the... Uh, Chicolitio, Chicolitio, or something like that. And... Uh, and Tinian, Tinian's a great writer. I love, uh, I think it's V Tinian or something like that, Fifth Tinian or something like that. Uh, and he's a great writer. I, I've loved his writing in the past. He's written so many great things. And so I thought, yeah, I've, I know this guy. He's, he does good. So I read it and I liked it. I do like it. And so I'm, I'm willing to give six issues a go because I'm, I'm willing to listen to Rico's because, hey, he's a comic guy. So if he's thinking that the stories are better now, I'll give it a go. But I think the damage that Marvel has done, and the and the and the, if you notice the new thing they put out, and we'll talk about this on Friday in more depth. Hopefully, uh, Rick, oh no, we're on we're on lockdown, so Rico won't be able to join me. But hopefully, he'll get on Messenger, and we'll be able to like hear him through the Messenger uh, video, and I'll put him so that we like there's a laptop here, and you know he's there. Um, on the screen and talking and the, the good mic will pick it up so I'm glad I'm invested in that mic now this is about pre-planning this is a cool thing like yeah it's good to be pre-planned guys um, so yeah we'll talk about that and so you know X-Men having sidekicks blows my mind just seriously uh, Wolverine's gonna have a Wolverine's going to have uh, a sidekick. Wolverine's always had a sidekick. I can't remember her name now. Shadow. Shadow Cat. The one who can get through walls. She's he's, she's always felt like Wolverine's sidekick. Because they get on so well. And the other thing is, don't need sidekicks. They just, they're just great characters. The X-Men don't need more stupid Mutant characters. What you need to do is write great stories about these mutants. So Jonathan Hickman, right? Was it Jonathan? Or was it Robert? I think it was Jonathan. 
he um like last year came up with like the whole um uh, x-men go communist the mutants go communist all right they create their own country like china and they close it off to everybody else and they go if you want our you know uh we're gonna live in our place and if you try to do anything to us we're gonna have a go at you we'll police ourselves we'll take care of ourselves north korea china that's what communism is all right great idea cool idea I, I, I it was brilliant i love that i thought it was great what a good twist and they said if you you know we have a wonder wonder um, medicine uh you know we'll give it to you if you leave us alone otherwise we won't give it to you cool so great idea now they come up with sidekick x-men so the idea is everybody's gonna have a robin and that sound good to you every x-men having a robin instead of being good books books that almost got me back like um the hickman thing right um you know i actually want to finish it i was i think i was up to issue five all of them i didn't finish it because i was just like yeah i'll just leave it for a little bit let it come you know let it get in my head a bit more because i don't want to rush reading sometimes you have to go back to things and not finish it and just give it a bit of time to percolate in your head and now they just they just keep putting nails in the coffin yeah you're right Kara goes they are sidekicks but no one's saying they're sidekicks but we all know they are and this is the thing see they think we're dumb and this is the industry that we live in with the, with the mainstreamers in, with the mainstream comic book industry is that they they treat us like we're dumb if you spent 30 years reading comics you know how heroes work and this is what i've said previously you know in your head how villains work you know how in your head kitty thank you it was shadow cat right yeah and yeah she was always there and she was never treated as a psychic but you could think of it as like that but she was such a love she's a lovely character and also um she um you know if i remember right she was with uh so, um cyclops uh not cyclops uh, the uh the cyborg character you know mu you know muscle stamps is the metal uh tells you shows you how long i've been you know it's been a while since i've read read them um so you know it's like they don't understand these new people write them and they're and they're like diversity hires we call them diversity hires because they're not merit hires they're not people who have written comics they're not people who spent years understanding studied learned from someone like uh, stan lee jim shooter uh uh howard checkham garth ennis alan moore all those people they haven't understood they haven't even they probably haven't even freaking read the books if they had they would understand what it means to be comic book heroes because that's the mainstream of american comic books it's superheroes everybody else that's not their mainstream like in europe they don't know superheroes as a mainstream they have crime sci-fi fantasy dwarves druids any things that have to do with their culture right but in america it's superheroes mainly right apart from the independence and such you know what i mean clauses yes thank you yeah so kara's saying enrich the characters you have they need to stop with a crazy guy yeah you're right enrich the characters they have and stop with the pc crap i agree because at the end of the day you've just turned off hundred and twenty thousand of your customers by doing the shadow uh, the, um, you know yeah yeah that was uh, that was a thing right the kibblesmith oh ayala oh, i can't remember her name oh she's got all the backstory written oh she's got it all sort of all the family the children at them cool but the characters are about internet guests and they have a reddit and they do tiktok 
cool i do i don't do reddit i don't do tiktok but i have twitter instagram youtube and all that so um, all i need is swamp gas right anyway that made me laugh but they also can't see the racistness of what's going on they they just these guys they don't understand of the racism that they they the hidden racism in it and and some of the actual um comic book guys who are smarter than me who do this better than me and will always do this better than me they have spoken out about it and they've just said they are blind to the fact you're public enemy right you're blind to the fact you just can't see it for yourself and you're right right and it's 10 years of this man it's 10 years a decade of it a decade of this is not going to bring it back now with the way you're doing it this is the end of marvel if i'm if, if i'm 99.9 percent .9 sure because it could be that they get bailed out they could blame it all the idea brain dead ideas on this what's happening right now with all of us over the world and they go, oh, 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 I just had a brain fart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And put it off. But at the end of the day, those guys spent months You're right. Yeah, Wonder Man is... Yeah, you're right. Um, Wonder Man... Yeah, it's. What do you mean? You look, you look. Wonder Woman is great. Wonder Man is bad. The, yeah, I think the way the way you do things is to go back to the start. You go and go. How did the granddaddy do it? How did how did how did the classic creators that we love so much in the nineties write? in the 80s and 70s how do they do some how do these they grab people how do they grab the audience how did image sell a million cop million issues on day one I, I, I forget what comic was how do they sell a million copies on day one why did they sell it what was in it and that's something i think when i'm creating indicator girl going what is this this female about what drives this female what is incredible girl all about why did i want to do it what is my purpose for creating it it is about hope and it has to be about hope and it has to be a family all right because they're all families they're all part of this family and i can't give you much about it because i want you to read the comment because it's it's big spoilers all the way if, if i say anything even though it's a sixth issue it's just so much coming on it that it's you you gotta know who your villains are you gotta know who your middle you know your anti-heroes are you gotta know how they work in their brain what are they thinking why do they hate what they hate what do they love what they love why do they what is it that drives them what's the motivation that's one of the things that we learned at film school when we were writing stories even before i went there i already knew i was doing stage plays as you know what is a driving factor of that one main actor or actress on that stage and what is the sporting cast supposed to do right and they these guys don't know kibble smith doesn't know what he's doing Marvel doesn't know what he's, what they're doing. Most of the new crew, the new hires, the last 10 years, forced hires, I would say. Forced because they had to look less white. Right? And get new energy. Get the social media crowd. But guess what? The movies aren't making people buy comics. Because if they were, those people raging all day about how much they like in Captain Marvel... She's number 47 on the list of comics sold each month. They don't buy comics, guys. The social media crowd, those guys who go on about diversity and uh, inclusiveness and uh, tolerance, you know, 
they don't go and buy the comic, go to a comic shop and buy a comic. They don't go online and purchase that. They might buy a t-shirt. That's it. But that's because they can wear it and say, I am a comic person. That's it. But they don't have any legitimate history in the industry in supporting the comic book shops. They don't do it. They'll talk about it. Oh, you know, saw the comic shop. Down, I got one down the road from me. But they won't go in. Oh, because it smells. It's got all these old, you know, it's got those cruddy boys in there. But guess what? When you actually go in there and talk to those boys, they'll tell you what you should buy. What would they really, you know, they'll ask you questions like, what are you reading? Because I get that all the time. I go to different shops. Over the years, I've been to several shops, right, in New Zealand. And even when I go to, go to, um, I'm a get in. I'll say, what are you into? I'll talk to the person next to me and go, what are you into? Maybe you look, you know, you know, maybe try this one. You know, that was a good story. Uh, try that one. You know, are you just getting into it? You know, you know, and I'm, I'm like a salesperson when it comes to comics because I love this freaking thing. All right. So I will, I will even be at Armageddon selling comics on behalf of people of the store. And then, because I appreciate what they do because I want to see them come back. I want to see people reading comics more. And so I will go out and show them, hey, you know, I love this comic. How old are you? Yeah, you might, yeah, are you into this? Yeah, read that. I've made one mistake and I really regret it once because I was, but the person looked 18, I wasn't sure. But yeah, so, you know, and that's what we are like when we are, when we are off a fandom, all right? We're not people who close ourselves off. We are verbal about what we love and we want more people to join us in that love for what we do. And and when you have people on on like companies like Marvel and Dance Lot and Gold Simone from DC, CB Sabolsky and all those guys who just rant all day about how bad the comic and comic cu customers are and readers are. It's like, but those are the guys that pay for your bills, mate. If you keep hounding them and they have done for 10 years, yeah, they're gone. And they'll go soon. And you'll be like, what happened to my job? I'm just going to be doing conventions and signing autographs for the rest of my life. I'm not, you know, nobody's buying my art. Oh, oh, I did that 10 years ago. I, I'm doing this now. Did you, have you bought that? No, I don't like it, mate. Yeah, here's my signature. Right, so I'm going to, I'm going to close off here because I think that's enough of me for tonight. And I miss Rico. I think Rico's really cool to bounce off when he's here. All right, so Kara, Kara says, I don't like how they make a great character then decide, hmm, I think I would change the sex or race. But you're right. Go back to the 101 of creating comics. Yeah, you're right. Um, so yeah, I don't like how they make a great character then decide, hmm, I think I would change the sex or race. And that's been my thing. All right. It's, I don't want Superman to be anybody but Clark Kent, ever. You can have you can have Steel because he's Steel, but I don't want Steel be taking on the mantle of that, which reminds me of Captain America. Just came to mind. I don't want. I don't want him. I don't want Hawk. I can't remember his name now. To become you know. To become um, freaking Captain America. Why? What's the reason? Why? Oh, because he's white. Then build up freaking the black character's character. Great, do great writing of that character. Build him into a great, get freaking, get Jim Shooter, get, get Howard Chaik and do an adult version of it. Do, you know, I mean mature version, sorry, not adult. You know, and get someone like, you know, uh, Todd McFarlane, some great people, you know, to write people who don't hound creators all day, you know, not creators, sorry, customers all day long. Yeah, that's basically it. That's that's what it comes down to, right? So, um, Kara's saying, that's them right. I'm a huge Moon Knight fan, but hardly anyone knows who he, who he is. But when when you watch it when it comes out, um, but when when you watch it, uh, sorry, 
When it comes out on Disney+, Plus, every man and his dog will say, yeah, I'm a big fan of Moon Knight. Exactly. So, and here's the thing. I never read the Peter, um, the Miles, Miles comic books. I think I might have a couple around because of the shop. But, yeah. I, I, nobody know nobody outside of comics knows who's, apart from the, the ones who went to watch the movie. And I love the movie, by the way. I just thought it was fun. I can appreciate it for what it is. All right. I think I have a poster somewhere. But you're right. Um, Spider-Man's Peter Parker. With great power up comes great responsibility. One of the most iconic, iconic things in um, in comic books. Like up, up and away. Look up in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Superman. That's not anybody else. That's Clark Kent. Right? You're right. With great power comes great res um, responsibility. Spider-Man. Hulk smash. Banner. All right? Not because they're just male characters. Because I, c I can't remember any other... I'm um, sorry, I can't remember the other... Um, because, I, you know, I just... I've, my head's full of um, manga. Sorry, I've been reading manga for two weeks straight. Uh, apart from one or two... Um, uh, actually, no, I haven't read any comics at all, apart from um, the number 86 or whatever issue we're up to with um, um, Batman, because, of, you know, I suggested it. But yeah, anyway, so, you know, um, Disney's lost, has, is getting a $60 billion thing, um, bailout, because guess what? They learned that Marvel's not making the money, all the movies they're putting out, they're making billions, they only get 30% cut, whatever, of it, that isn't doing great for them. Not only that, Marvel isn't making the money. Just like this, um, DC isn't making Warner's money. The granddaddy and TNT ain't making their money. So what they're going to do, they're going to go back to the last 80 years, 70 years, and, and make those movies based on those characters because I realize the guys in Marvel right now are clueless about what it means to be a hero, what it means to be an anti-villain, an uh, anti-hero, and what it means to be a villain. They just don't get it. And that's me for tonight, guys. That's enough of me. And I'm sure you're tired of me. I'm tired of me at this point. Uh, like I said, I'm Miss Rico. If you're still watching, buddy, we're going to have to do Messenger. We're definitely going to have to do Messenger. So, good night from you guys. Kakite Ano. Keep safe. Uh, hopefully, you have, um, you know, your pantry's full. You have your TPs. But remember, for generations, we never had TP. In Fiji, we have a bowl of water, a bucket of water. Use the hand and soap. Wash the butt. Wipe it off. Wash, use the soap. Wipe it off. Wash it off. Right? So, if you run out of toilet paper, that's what you do. Don't freak out. Right? Don't go stealing. Don't go rushing to freaking trying to, you know, neighbors and all that. I know people can get crazy when stress happens. Please, you know, like I said at the start, find your safe, not safe space, but find your space, right? That you can be free in, free space. That you can just chill out, listen to music, put your headphones on, do some drawing, do some writing. Escape from the little stresses for a little bit of time. Um, social media, socialize, right? Don't get all warmed up by what's going on, but you know, just listen to news, let, let, let our leaders lead us, um, and hopefully we'll be we'll be right in a month because this because I reckon it will take us a month. Cheers, Kara. Cheers, everybody, for watching. Uh, I appreciate you for watching, and I thank you. You guys are making this happen. This is, makes it really cool, having to answer back questions or listen, you know, seeing that people are watching, because otherwise I'm just talking head, and that's no fun. Kakite ano, be well. Read a comic, read a manga, watch anime, love your characters, go back and read what, what's happened. What, go back to the, before 20, 2003, I'd say. Go back before 2003. Read all that stuff before that. From the 80s to 2003. So you got basically 20 years of amazing writing. And then you want the classics? Go further back. 
but manga manga writing is good right now it's that's why every you know everybody is so hyped about manga because anime and manga is doing so good right now watch subs if you have time because then you get the right wording you don't get the agendas in it yeah exactly that's why i said it's free space not safe space i had that that safe space i think kibble smith has gone to a safe space right now because he ain't on online cheers brothers thank you sisters bye thank you for watching Kakiteano. Doesn't want me to. Mike is in the way.